It was really a mic check, but it worked for your purpose as well. Um, happy to see you this morning, uh, giving thanks for a beautiful, beautiful day, and uh, looking forward to worshiping with you. Wanted to start with just a couple announcements. Um, the main one being, uh, for those of you that would have any type of church business you would like brought to our attention at council, there is a council meeting this coming Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, also, just a reminder that as we are moving forward, uh, our annual meeting, which should have happened in July and had been postponed, um, I, I would guess uh, that we'll be looking at a September date for that. So for all of our teams and all of our uh, workers here in the church that maybe are in a position of leadership, we'll be having some discussions and meetings about those things. Uh, the nominating committee will be meeting, so um, if you are interested in volunteering for something, uh, please contact me and, and we'll make sure the nominating team knows that you are ready to get to work. Um, and there again, any other workings of the church that might be uh, a cause for question or concern, I would encourage you to contact one of your council members or myself so that we can address all those things. Um, Want to make sure that you know if you have other announcements you would like spoken uh, during our worship service, you can write those down and put them on the table uh, back there by the tech booth. Also, joys and concerns, prayer concerns, put those back there and we'll make sure those uh, come forward during the worship service so we can share those publicly as well. Um, would you like to hear an inspirational prelude that will help you center your hearts for worship? Because I heard practice this morning and I think that's what we're going to get. So I would uh, encourage you, again, center your hearts, clear your thoughts, Prepare yourselves for worship. been exploring um, our purpose the past couple Sundays, both as individuals and as a church, uh, realizing that we are created for something more, uh, that God will fulfill his purpose in us. And we've looked at worship, what that means, what it feels like, what it looks like. Uh, last week we looked at evangelism and, and how we are called, how we are commanded to reach out to others. And today we're going to look at discipleship, uh, growing and maturing in our faith. Uh, I told you we're going to be inspired to come to worship and, and hear this prelude and, and come together. And I would like to take a moment before we dive into the message. Let's just pray. Let's pray. God, we're asking that you would speak to us through your word, that you would open our eyes and our hearts, our minds, uh, 
open our ears so we can listen, but have us ready, Lord, to hear you, to see you, to feel your presence. Um, as we explore the topic of discipleship today, Lord, we want to be your disciples. Our, our prayer is, is pretty simple in saying, show us how to do that. Enable us through your Holy Spirit. Equip us. Uh, prepare us. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Uh, last week when we were talking about evangelism, I said that's an area that I get a lot of questions as far as what does it mean, what do we do. Uh, discipleship, another one of those areas where I usually get some questions. Um, folks will come to me and say, what, what does the word discipleship really mean? Um, what does the discipleship team at our church really do? I'm kind of interested. What do I have to do? Um, people will say, how do I become a disciple? What defines that? Are there only 12 or are there more? There are so many misconceptions about what discipleship is. Some think it's just a word that covers the general overview of everything that happens in the church. Um, others view discipleship as some special course that they have to sign up for. It's a Bible study or a class, and, and we're going to walk around with notebooks and fill in the blanks during the sermons and things like that. That's, that's discipleship. Um, some others think that discipleship is even more intense than that, that discipleship training is only geared for pastors or deacons of a church. Um, you have to go to seminary for that to be discipled. Um, again, still others view discipleship just as kind of one of those churchy words. Um, that means the same as the secular word like mentoring. That's what discipleship is. Today I want us to give our attention and focus to what discipleship really means. What is it? And I'm going to be reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Thanks be to God for his word for us. Now, even just reading that with you now, I'm thinking it could take us a week to uh, sift through all that and analyze everything in those verses. So I want to bring it down to a bit more basic level, some basic areas of understanding about what discipleship looks like and what it involves. First and foremost, discipleship is a mission of love. It's a commitment to follow Jesus and let him teach us. And it's basic and initial meaning I want to be a disciple of Jesus because I love him. I've committed my life to serving him. I want to become more and more like him, to reflect Jesus in everything I do, to be a fully devoted follower of Christ. In other words, discipleship is a matter of devotion and identifying with Jesus, being his disciple. Uh, I heard a story a few years back about a, a sculptor who invited a guest to his studio to see his work. His guest happened to be a news reporter that was covering him for a story. And, and the sculptor, uh, in inviting the guest into his studio, the, the guest recognizes that there are, are works of, you know, his sculptures on display everywhere in the studio. And he's walking around and looking, and there are life-size statues of 
people, of animals. There's deer, there's wildlife, um, all kinds of things. And the sculptor is, is working. He's busy chiseling away at a huge block of stone when this reporter asks him the question, what is this piece going to be? And the sculptor says, well, it's going to be a horse. And that reporter says, wow, that's, that's amazing looking at this block of stone. How do you know it's going to be a, ho a horse? How do you turn it into a horse? And the sculptor kind of looks at him like he's, you know, he's clueless. He, he says, well, I just chisel away everything that doesn't look like a horse. And at the end, you have a horse. That is what Jesus does with us. He chips away at us. He molds us into his image. He uses life experiences, things we learn, tests of faith, all of that to chip away the things that don't reflect his image in us. And as we mature in our faith, we grow more and more to look like him. Now, disciples, as they were called in the first century, were devoted followers of a, of a person, of a rabbi, of a teacher. And they left their homes and their jobs. They even left their families behind to travel, and they devoted themselves to sitting at the feet of their teacher. They soaked up whatever their teacher taught. They shaped and modeled their behavior, their attitude, their goals, their beliefs to their teacher. Their goal was to extend and multiply the work and mission of their rabbi or of their teacher. And they did that because they loved their teacher. And they loved his message. And they loved him to the point of being willing to die for him. In the same way, because we love Jesus, we've chosen to devote ourselves to growing and maturing so that we will become more like the image of Christ. A mature Christian understands that our goal is not merely just to see Jesus' face in heaven. That's, that's a done deal. That's assured. Instead, our goal is to be more and more like Jesus while we're here on this earth. And as we let him mold us into his image, we begin to reflect the characteristics that he demonstrated in his earthly life. Things like being a servant, putting other people's needs ahead of our own, um, being an encourager, knowing what's really true and trusting that truth, being mature, solid, our scripture says, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Let me put it this way. For a child to throw a temper tantrum, that's one thing. For an adult, that is something else. For a child to be selfish and demand his own way, that's one thing. For an adult, that is something else. Imagine this morning if you're home with, let's say you've got a toddler in your care. They're a little bit crabby. They're a little bit tired. They're a little bit hungry. And you say, it's time to go to church. And they're like, I don't want to. I don't like to. It's boring. The pastor is gross. I don't want to go. That is one thing. Now, if Trevin tells me it's time to go to church and I say, I don't want to, it's boring, and I don't want to go, and it's no fun, it's gross, that is an entirely different thing, isn't it? We expect adults to have matured, not just physically, but emotionally, intellectually, uh, in the ability to handle responsibility. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. We don't achieve that kind of growth on our own, but through Jesus working within us, growing us, maturing us. Discipleship is a mission of love as we seek to be more and more like Jesus, fully devoted to him. Secondly, discipleship is a matter of learning. 
There are plenty of people that think just a little bit of learning is sufficient. No need to devote ourselves to being serious students. Then I get to share with you a story that I picked up from a devotional a few years back. It says there's a theology professor who used to travel around the country delivering a lecture concerning, you guessed it, theological issues. Brilliant mind. He spoke several times a week, and each time there was a private chauffeur that took him to all of his events. After several weeks went by, one day his chauffeur says to him, you know, professor, I could do your job. I could do what you do. I could give that lecture. I've heard it so many times, I could probably do it better than you. The professor thought about that for a minute, and he says, okay. He says, next time, we'll switch places. And sure enough, the next time they were getting ready to go, the professor got in the driver's seat and chauffeured the fake professor, the chauffeur, to the event, where the chauffeur, posing as the professor, delivered the professor's lecture while the professor sat in the back of the room disguised as the chauffeur. Now, the chauffeur actually did a great job of speaking. In many ways, he was a better speaker than the professor. And he was quicker. He finished the lecture about 10 minutes earlier uh, than the usual time allotted for the lecture. So the host of the event, recognizing there was a little extra time, says, let's open up the floor for questions. You guessed it. There's another theology professor in the audience. Uh, proceeded to ask a very diff difficult theological question in reference to the lecture. And now the chauffeur is in unfamiliar territory. But he's pretty quick on his feet. So he says, sir, that question is so simple, I can't even believe you asked it. As a matter of fact, that question is so simple, even my chauffeur in the back of the room could answer that question. I'm going to let my chauffeur take it from here. Now that might have worked out that day for that chauffeur. But in real life, we don't have a substitute for learning. And in order to grow, to mature spiritually as Christians, we commit ourselves to learning and developing the fundamental skills and basic disciplines necessary for that growth. We need to learn what prayer means to us, what prayer is, what it isn't, uh, who we pray to, and why. We need to learn how to study the Bible, not because uh, there's a quiz coming up next week, not because you want that information to go on jeopardy, but if you win, don't forget your church. You don't study it just to impress people with how many verses you can recite. The reason we study the Bible is to answer that fundamental question of, so what? In what way does this passage of Scripture apply to my life? How can it apply to my life? How does it affect my faith? We also need to learn how to effectively communicate the gospel, how to be a witness for Christ. We need to learn to truly see others instead of living in such a way to only seek our personal interests. Um, we need to actually get involved in missions. We need to get involved in helping people. Jesus taught his disciples, even as late as the night of his betrayal, that being a servant is so important. We need to learn to be encouragers of others. Part of our role within the church, within the body of Christ, is to lift one another up, to invest ourselves in the lives of others and encourage them. Uh, I think mentoring programs are great, um, so beneficial. I would encourage you to become involved in whatever mentoring programs you can find. But here in the church, it shouldn't have to be an assignment. Um, there shouldn't need to be a situation where maybe the pastor comes to you and designates you to mentor someone. Um, I, I shouldn't have to tell you who to invest in and why in their lives. We should all be operating as encouragers 
all the time. It's not something that happens only when there's a confirmation class. It's not something that only happens during certain times of the year, and it certainly is not something that only is required for a select few. We need to lean, learn to be encouragers of others. Everyone, all the time. We need to learn how to practice responsible stewardship, taking care of the gifts we've been given. There are so many things that we need to learn. I could go on and on. And yet I have to point out that just knowing a lot of stuff isn't enough. There was a retired clergy person who wrote in his journal once. He said, I used to pastor an elderly fellow who would brag to me about how many thousands of sermons he had heard. I can't help but ask, what good will it do to hear thousands of sermons, go to thousands of worship services, read thousands of good Christian books, listen to thousands of good Christian instructional tapes, listen to good Christian music, if you never serve God. Don't tell me how much you know or how long you've been a believer. Show me how you live for Jesus. Don't claim to be a Christian unless you plan to act like it. The Christian faith today has become to many merely a matter of the mind rather than a matter of life. Just like worship, just like evangelism, discipleship is a matter of lifestyle. It's what we do every day, every minute of the day. And being an effective disciple, living our faith 24-7 requires motivation, multiplication, being fruitful, and mentoring, all to the glory of God. So this is the part where I ask you, are you a disciple of Jesus? Have you committed your life to him, received him as Savior and Lord, placing your eternal destiny safely in his hands? And if you say yes, how committed are you? Are you a fully committed, devoted follower of Christ? Or are you a little more casual with your Christian faith? So-so commitment. Are you submitting yourself to growing and learning? Are you being mentored by someone? Are you mentoring someone else? We need to worship. We need to connect with God. We need to be evangelists. We need to reach out, share our message. But we also need to grow up and mature in the faith. My prayer is that God will fulfill his purpose in all of us. Again, we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Some through great sorrow, but God gives us 
song in the night season and all the day long. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children along. Sometimes in the valley in darkness of night, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day. As we come to a time of prayer, um, there have been just a couple prayer concerns uh, shared with me. And I'm not sure if they're joys or concerns or maybe a combination of both, uh, but there's a, a mix of emotions. We've, we've got a couple members here who have uh, moved on. Uh, they, they've left the area or are going to be leaving the area. And uh, Rob and Barb are, are one of uh, those couples that immediately come to mind. I've had people ask, is there an address? How do we keep track of them? And, and uh, Rob and Barb are on what we call uh, Rob and Barb's Great Adventure. And uh, they, they are doing the RV thing for a while and uh, will let us know when they've got kind of a permanent location. But uh, I want you to be assured that their cell phones are still working and, and Barb's email address is still functional. So if you want to reach out to them, uh, there again, with our, our COVID uh, world that we live in, we've, we've not been together in such a way as to give them a, a farewell uh, party, if you will, or, or to send them with well wishes. Also, our good friend Diana, uh, moving on Wednesday. So um, we wish her well, but we are going to, to miss her deeply. And uh, I told her the other day in the parking lot that I, I miss her already, even looking at her. But... Uh, uh, again, joys and concerns for next chapters, so keep them in your prayers. Um, also, I have uh, continued well wishes and prayers for Tim as he has recovered from surgery. Uh, I understand that there was no cancer in the lymph nodes, so I'm, I'm happy to share that information and ask that you would continue to hold Tim in your prayers as well. Um, no others having been given to me. Friends, let's pray. God, you have called us into this amazing relationship with you. And we are so thankful. Uh, thank you for being God, for taking care of us and for providing for us. As we strive for growth and maturity, we seek wholeness and holiness. We pray that as your disciples, we can come to you with open hearts. We can come to you with a willingness to learn and a desire to do better. We lift up to you those that have been mentioned by name today, those who may be 
embarking on a, another step in their adventure, on their journey. We also pray for those who are looking for your healing, Lord. And when we say healing, we mean that in the truest sense, uh, that your presence can be felt and known and understood, that your security and your peace are what truly will offer the healing so many are seeking. Uh, for those who are facing physical illness, for those who um, have other types of distress or brokenness in their lives. Lord, we're praying for you to mend fences. We're praying for you to build bridges. We're just praying that you might touch people. Uh, for those who are not with us in worship, maybe worshiping at home today, uh, or those who are are always on a, a shut-in basis where they're not able to join us in a regular hour of worship. We're hoping to reach out to them in new ways also, Lord, and we pray that you might uh, use us as a conduit for your spirit. Uh, we do pray for those who are perhaps traveling or um, have some type of, of obligation, those who are uh, medical workers or, or in nursing homes where they are not able to be with us in a regular hour of worship again because they are, are working or have ob other obligations. We, we're looking for new ways to reach them as well. We pray that they can feel encompassed um, by our love, which stems from your love. We're reminded to be disciples, Lord, and we ask for your guidance in how to do that in each and every way. We choose to follow you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to dismiss today, I'm, I'm thinking for those of you who have been following this series and, and we talked about worship and how we want that to be our lifestyle. We talked about evangelism and how we want that to be our lifestyle. Today it's discipleship and we, discipleship and we want that to be our, our lifestyle. We have work to do. And uh, sometimes it can be overwhelming trying to understand what all this means and what we need to do and how do we go about this. And, and maybe there's even pressure to be the best disciple that I can be. And I thought perhaps a, a little encouragement might go a long way. Um, from Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. As you go, as you go on from here with the rest of your day and the days to come for all of your days, may you be blessed with assurance. We're told in Scripture. If God is for us, who can be against us? Be assured and be blessed in knowing nothing is impossible with him. Amen.
everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior. The whole Again, I will encourage you as we dismiss uh, to have the folks in the back be the ones to lead us out so that we're not passing by each other more than necessary. Thank you for respecting the, the guidelines of social distancing and caring for one another in that way. Uh, as you go, may God bless your week and know that God is with you. Amen. Amen.